Hi, everybody. I'm Bob Ruggiero, Vice President of Communications for Quilts Incorporated. And one of the most exciting exhibits we're going to see in Long Beach this year is a celebration of color. This is a judge show that had lots of cash prizes sponsored by eQuilter.com. And the first place in the art category was Blue Wave, which is behind me right here. It's by Betty Busby. I'm going to go ahead and read her artist statement. Betty said, I wanted to play with pure color and use a technique I developed especially for this project, using rubbing alcohol with fabric paint. Each painted piece was cut out individually and appliqued by a machine. I created the diagonal blue lines to tie the piece together. So let's welcome up Betty Busby. Betty, thank you for joining us today. Well, thank you for having me, Bob. And I really appreciate the award and I'm sure it's going to be a fabulous, colorful show. Um, this piece came from the middle of winter. It's dark out, it's cold. So you want to get all the colors out. And it was really an excuse to play with just about every color in my color box and um, allow the paint to kind of do what it wanted to. I combined alcohol and very low viscosity fabric paint. And as you can see in the background, um, we've got the paint spreading kind of at will. So I took each one of those pieces and cut them out as erratically as I could and applique them together. And as I said, I put them in uh, with the diagonal blue lines to kind of tie the composition together. And of course, added more dots because everything is better with dots. <laughs> it kind of sounds like it's a, it's a process you really haven't used a lot before. So was there any trepidation going in? Like, you know, oh my God, I could really screw this up or it could turn out to be really great. Oh, heck no. Just jump in with two feet. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, there's um, probably a little drawer full of samples that didn't work out, but <laughs> when I like to work improvisationally, so I'll make a big old background and put these different colors and shapes up on the background and then move them around till they look good. And then I'll make some more, oh, I need some more green ones over here. And how about some hot color ones to set off the green ones? So, so yeah, no, I plunge in with two feet. Well, let's jump in our time traveling DeLorean and go back, back, back in time a bit. So uh, tell me how you first got interested in quilting, but then also what made you kind of make the jump from just liking it to, to wanting to create your own art? Well, I grew up in Pennsylvania, not far from Amish country. And I remember going to the Kutztown County Fair and seeing the Amish quilts nailed up on the barn walls behind their buggies. And I still think they're magnificent works. And they were my original inspiration. And for a long time, even though I have um, basically always dyed my own fabric and made my own fabric, Quilts had to be bed size. They had to be made out of cotton. They had to go in the washing machine. So that was kind of my mindset for a number of years. And then when I went full-time into art quilting, I kind of got rid of that. And then how does this one kind of stand out for you among all the quilts you've made? What kind of things do you remember about making like making it like, oh, that was the quilt where, where this happened? Well, that's a very good question. Um, I just remember partying down with the colors and also uh, using every kind of material I could find. There are non-woven materials in there. There are cottons in there. There are silks um, and just bringing each material out and seeing how the paint and the alcohol reacted to each other. So uh, that it was, it was really just basically a fun experience. Now, when you were making it with alcohol, it wasn't really kind of a one for the quilt, one for me, <laughs> one for the quilt, one for me. Because, I mean, if I was quilting, that's that's what I might do. So No, you get a massage with that kind of alcohol. Oh, okay. Wow. I, I really should not, investigate my creative side a little bit. It's more. not the vodka alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Betty, uh, I ask this question to everyone, and, and it's always interesting, the answers I get. If you could have one quilting superpower something you could do that would never fail, that would be your superpower, what would it be? Um, I would be a, like to be able to stitch better. I have a, um, <clears throat> I don't have a dedicated long arm. I have a adapted straight stitch singer machine that is on a track, but I don't have 
the visibility that you would get with a dedicated long arm. So my quilting superpower involves a you know, forty thousand uh, dollar computerized machine. <laughs> I think that would be great if someone would just give me one. <laughs> Well, if anyone watching this out there wants to Venmo Betty some money for her dream machine, I'm sure. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so uh, yeah, you never know where these things come from. <laughs> well, then you have to learn how to work them. So that's a whole other thing. <laughs> so uh, tell me what you're working on now. Oh, that's a good question. I actually have a solo show coming up in um, uh, Kent, no, Oklahoma City. I keep saying Kansas City, Oklahoma City. So I'm gathering all that stuff together and getting ready to head out there and put stuff up and their ceiling hung work, their sculptures. Um, there's a installation piece I'm going to build there. So it's going to be quite uh, uh, an adventure. <laughs> wow, that certainly sounds like a lot. And then finally, you know, this exhibit was all about obviously color and the impact and visually and, and emotionally that color has in art. Tell me a little bit about what role color plays, not just in, in this quilt for you, but in your in your entire work. Well, um, so that is kind of, uh, you know, the I think the answer would be yes, <laughs> because, you know, things like this, I love to use all the colors and basically I'm using hot colors and cold colors, but then I do a lot of work that's very limited colors. I do some work that black and white. I've done a lot of work with uh, like white linen with black mesh over it to kind of ground myself. I did go to art school and one of the things that they teach you is to uh, pay attention to the intensity of your colors and, you know, play with the values and don't just have, you know, the same intensity all the time, but really work in contrast. I think with uh, fiber art especially we need to think a lot about contrast because when we add the stitching and the texture that it adds takes away some of the contrast that's there so well, that's that's, a, great. that's that's well, a really good question and of course behind you is of course my favorite green and because green is the best color <laughs> <laughs> everything else is setting off the green <laughs> Well, that that could be the the headline for your uh, for your book, "Setting Off the Green" by Betty Bus. There you go. There you go. Yep, yep. <laughs> well, Betty, slime thanks green. so much time. <laughs> slime green is the best. <laughs> <laughs> slime green. Well, Betty, thank you so much for taking out the time to do this. And I Absolutely. want to remind everybody watching this: you can see all of the finalists and winners in a celebration of color. It'll be on display at the Long Beach Quilt Festival, July 6th through 8th. That's coming up in just a few weeks. And the exhibit will also be on display in Houston, November 2nd through 5th this year. So you have two chances to see these amazing quilts. And Betty, again, thank you for uh, taking out the time to join us today. Absolutely. Have a wonderful time at the shows. Okay.